Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to the seventh lecture or the second lecture of the second week. Okay. Let me just put it down. Lecture seventh or week two lecture two. W2 L2, which is in summary the seven lecture. So, if you remember, in the last lecture we talked about the primitive earth. This is where we claim that the simple biological molecules can be formed under the prebiotic conditions. The condition that existed on earth in its first billion years are still a matter of dispute. Okay. Was the earth initially molten? we really do not know. So, these are some of the questions which are unanswered. Did the atmosphere contain ammonia? We are uncertain how these first set of molecules were formed. Did the environment contain methane? We do not know. But everyone seems to agree however, that the earth was a violent place with what we had in terms of the energy we know whether these molecules existed or not, we are not sure. We know it was a very violent place because the reason why we mention this is, if you see, we have kept all these molecules here, what it is of course, you know, evaporating and going here, but these molecules we added, but we do not know fundamentally how these molecules even were there or not, because there are questions that whether these molecules are there or not. Okay. So, that is why this question continuously comes as a critique to Uri Miller's stuff. Okay. So, but everybody agrees that there are volcanic eruptions, there are lightning, violent places, volcanic eruptions, there was lightning. and all sorts of their torrential rains. It is a different kind of world. This is how the most primitive earth was. Simple organic molecules that is molecules containing carbon are likely to have been produced under those conditions. Okay. So, it is believed again this is all believed the best evidence for this comes from laboratory experiment. If a mixture of as we have mentioned mixture of CO2 plus CH4 methane NH3 ammonia plus hydrogen are heated. So, this is where the energetics comes into play with water and energized with electrical energy. Remember I mention or I enumerated all the different forms of energies which are available, mechanical, osmotic, electrical, thermal, chemical, geothermal, light, gravitational, so on and so forth. So, if you provide all these different kind of energies and or the ultraviolet rays, of course, you can use UVs also. UV is a high energy, if you remember E is equal to H nu, where if you go by the go by the wavelength of it. So, basically E is equal to H 1 upon lambda and this lambda, the higher the, the lower the lambda is, higher is the energy value and U V is around 220 to you know 280 nanometer. If you remember that hard U V is and the soft U V is there may be the numbers may be slightly left or right, but this is where it ranges. So, UVs has extremely high energy. Okay. So, if you provide all these different kind of energies, it is capable of 
making some of the very early biological molecule. Among these products are number of compounds like hydrogen cyanide HCN, formaldehyde HCHO and it is possible that they may lead to formation of amino acids, nucleotides, sugars, fatty acids. So, this is the other way of looking through Uri Miller eyes that this is possibly may have happened. But for us, barring aside, leaving aside all these controversies, how life probably have evolved. What is important for us to appreciate and understand is that it really does not matter to get into that controversies, but what is important for us is to realize that the key point what we wanted to highlight here is this, this drawing that let me this part of the story. A molecular self assembly governed or carried out by energy and in that process the second aspect what we have to be careful is this part the thermodynamics rules which are governing it and the key word which is essential if this is one concept which I want it to, to people to understand this is what we will be dealing time and again and the philosophy what we are going to talk or what will be our central theme of the course all throughout will be this. Creating order out of chaos or in other energy self assembling the molecules. So, we will keep our eyes exclusively on this instead of getting into the controversies which are which will exist because none of us can go back in time to figure out what possibly have happened. But we without any doubt can appreciate how thermodynamical parameters have led to evolution of different kind of molecules. Now, from here I will just go a little bit off now in highlighting some of the very early species or in the evolutionary cascade in the species from the bacteria to the higher organism where they stand the family relations between the present day bacteria and what all role they have played. Because the reason why I am highlighting this is the chemosynthesis remain a forte of very old bacteria like archibacteria and all those sulfur reducing bacteria and all those, those are the ones which are really good at it. And some of those chemosynthesis organisms now can be seen under the sea, under the deep, deep down into the ocean floor that is where we can see them. So, let us draw a evolutionary chart for your knowledge that how things have evolved over a period of time from where chemical synthesis to photosynthesis which is done by chloroplast and chemical synthesis which is done by very very old primitive bacteria which are most of them are extinct or may be seen in very rarest of the rarest places on the floor of earth or somewhere deep inside the earth. So, let us put a flow chart of those different kind of microbes ok. To start off with the ancestor. So, as a biologist most of you are aware of there are two forms of uh, cells eukaryotic cell prokaryotic cell. So, eukaryotics are the ones what we are carrying and prokaryotics are the ones which bacteria carries. So, prokaryotes are the ones where so for those so 
a simplest drawing is something like this. This is a eukaryotic cell with a well-defined nucleus, DNA and the different organelles. Very, very well-defined structure all over the place. This is your E. You carry otic. And then comes pro carry otic. So very simple. They indeed have a not as well developed membrane, but they do not have anything called a nuclear membrane. So this is cell membrane CM. This is nuclear membrane. These are the different kind of organelles. I'm just putting it as O, okay? So whereas if you see the prokaryote, so here you have nuclear material NM. You have the, they do not have any well-defined organelle. All the chemicals are scattered around. So this is prokaryote is much less organized. So this is a less organized. So now why I use the word less organized and more organized? There is a reason why I use the word. I very purposefully picked up this word. The reason being whenever we talk about organization, organizational skill or organized, you know, in our colloquial terms, we always say, oh, look, such organized city, oh, such an organized group of people, such an organized uh, industrial setting. So when you talk about organized, that means you have to invest a lot of energy in ensuring organized structure. Otherwise, if there is a chaos, you know, you keep something here, you know, things are little moving around, you really do not have to spend a lot of energy. So if you keep this analogy in mind, then you will realize in order to have a more and more organized structure, you have to invest a lot more energy as compared to. So in other words, if you go back, what I am trying to tell you, that self-assembly of molecules or atoms to form organized structure by investing energy. So the more the organization of it it will be, the more energy it will be needing, the more will be its energy expenditure and most likelihood those have evolved later as compared to the prokaryotes. If I go by the energetics rule, in order to organize a prokaryote, if I am just putting, in order to organize the prokaryote you need less energy and the energy consumption of it, its energy utilization of it is less energy utilizer, okay. As compared to, of course, with respect to, with respect to the eukaryote. So eukaryote on, on the other hand, if you have to have such a more organized structure, you have to have very high energy demand and very high energy input. So so you see how a structure, two different structures, a pro prokaryote and a eukaryote can lead you to think from a very energetic perspective and as we will move, we will realize that uh, much of these structures of eukaryote have hired special organelles to perform this energy activity and uh, one of the thing what now when we talk about this O, I said, I'm talking about the organelle. Now, I'll just take little flirting into that aspect which attract me a lot is possibly most of these eukaryotes in case of say photosynthesis, if we talk about it is being done by chloroplast, right? Having the pigment of 
chlorophyll. Now, chloroplast as an organelle has been believed to have been parasitized into the eukaryote because the chloroplast as it has a nucleic acid in it. So, in other words, a chloroplast essentially may would have been a prokaryote which, which parasitized on this cell and becomes part of it. And, and by the way, one more thing since I drew it, the scale wise, these are far more smaller. Okay? So, as a matter of fact, you can explain it in a way in order to maintain a higher organized structure of eukaryote, it probably have hired a prokaryote, a prokaryote called chloroplast, a prokaryote called mitochondria, which became part of this eukaryotic cell and like a powerhouse, like an energy harvester, like our solar panels, a uh, cell has this prokaryotes into it. So, what is important for us to realize whenever in a textbook we write this is eukaryotic, this is prokaryotic, I always used to wonder that you know then when I studied about this and I thought that is this classification so very um, correct. Instead if we put it from the energetics perspective we can say you know there are some who are like this, there are some who have taken over some of the prokaryotes into them and uh, became autotrophs. So, those who are having this eukaryote with this chloroplast, they became autotrophs who can synthesize, who can harvest light and synthesize molecules of or energy rich molecules. Okay? Whereas, some never became, never got parasitized by those prokaryotes and they remain heterotrophs. They depend on the autotrophs to harvest the energy and then they consume that some form or other to you know, harvest its own energy and then comes your prokaryotes. So, this fundamental concept I wanted to highlight for you people to realize to appreciate that in this whole system there are different ways you can look at this whole thing and most of these prokaryotes very early prokaryotes if we talk about they have harvested energy by or from chemical compounds. So, this is one interesting concept which I wish to imbibe in you people to think slightly differently about these prokaryotes, eukaryotes and the role of chloroplast which is essentially possibly was a prokaryote at some point or other. And got parasitized into a eukaryote to make what we call as the autotrophs. And similarly, mitochondria which also has a nucleic acid in it or a genome into it which remain within the eukaryote as ATP molecule synthesizer. Okay, but it does not have the ability to harvest solar energy. So, I will close in here in the next class we will go into that classification of those prokaryotes and we will move further from there. Thank you.